Chief Minister, welcome to 7.30. Thanks, Sarah. Was Sofronoff's decision to release this report to the media a breach of the Inquiries Act and could that constitute a criminal offence? Uh, well, look, it could be. I'm seeking further advice on that. Section 17 of the Act uh, is quite clear about non-disclosure provisions. Uh, whether it is a breach of the Act or not is uh, ultimately the subject of a legal determination, but regardless, uh, it certainly is a, uh, a breach of, uh, of faith, and I, and I think, frankly, a, a decision I, I can't quite comprehend as to uh, why and what it has led to is uh, really a, a further media circus in relation to this matter where the hope had been that the Board of Inquiry would uh, finally draw a line under the matter. Now, you said that uh, this leak has had huge consequences for everyone involved. Beyond those you've already spoken of, what are those consequences? Well, I think it has just uh, simply gone to fuel uh, a further media circus. It has undermined uh, in the eyes of many uh, the process uh, and in the eyes of some, uh, from, from what I can see, uh, some concern about, uh, about the actual commentary within the report. Let me just stay with this for a moment um, because Mr Sofronoff didn't only leak the document but he's also admitted to briefing journalists ahead of certain days of the inquiry about what was likely to come the fo on the following days. Could that also end up before the Integrity Commission? Well, look, it doesn't look good. I don't think I don't know what purpose uh, it served from from his perspective, uh, and it's just not a good look. Uh, the question of uh, of who said what to where, to whom and when uh, is uh, something that you know may need further examination. Uh, but to remain calm and objective about about these things, I understand why people are concerned about the leaking uh, of the report and indeed uh, the subsequent explanation outlining uh, that engagement with journalists throughout the process. Now, journalists have a role to play, uh, that is understood, but uh, one would have hoped that a properly constituted uh, board of inquiry, a serious inquiry into a serious matter would not have uh, spiralled into this sort uh, of outcome. Is it possible that uh, this is going to be referred to the National Integrity Commission? I don't believe the National Integrity Commission would be the appropriate entity. I believe the ACT Integrity Commission uh, may be. I will seek further advice. Uh, what I'm clear about is that I, I don't believe the leaking of the report uh, ahead of time uh, and from what I understand to be the engagement with journalists throughout the process should have no consequences whatsoever. Uh, you know, there, there must be an understanding of why and what happened and did this impact uh, in any way uh, the conduct of the inquiry. In your press conference today, you have been critical of the Australian's Janet Albrechtson without naming her specifically. Wasn't she just doing what journalists do, which is reporting a story that was given to her? Well, it was uh, by Mr Sofronoff's uh, indication to me, given under embargo, uh, the consequence of breaching that embargo is there for all to see. Uh, I think it was unfortunate uh, that uh, the report was given uh, to anyone. I, I do note, and I it raises the question, why that particular newspaper columnist and why that particular newspaper columnist, before providing the report as was required under the legislation to myself as Chief Minister, and then why several days later provide it to one other journalist uh, under embargo. And what, what is your uh, understanding of the answer? Outlets. What is your understanding of the answer to that question? Well, it, it, it is not entirely clear other than uh, uh, Mr Sofronoff appeared to have formed a view that some journalists were more trustworthy than others. So he has been, uh, I think, perhaps uh, found to be a little naive in relation to whether uh, an embargo that really wasn't his to place on the report anyway uh, was then not on it. Let's move on to the content of the report. Do you accept uh, Sofronov's findings that Mr Drumgold acted unethically and is also guilty of serious misconduct? Well, they were comments, not findings, and I do note that, uh, that 
uh, between the draft and final reports, Mr. Mr. Sofronov changed his uh, his view on a number of those matters. They remained as comments. Uh, I think the the matter of uh, the DPP's position uh, has been resolved. The Attorney General, as is uh, is proper under the uh, Appointing legislation uh, for the DPP and the I, territory I think, had but that I, conversation. But I think what I'm trying to understand from you is, is if you concur that what you saw in that report, the the actions that he's reporting on, are serious misconduct, amount to serious misconduct. Well, look, in in the opinion of Mr. Sofronoff, that is the case. I have uh, no reason to doubt that opinion. Uh, I note, though, that Mr. Drumgold contests elements of that. He's Public statements indicate uh, an admission of making mistakes, but of contesting elements uh, of Mr. Sofronov's comments. Uh, I'm not in a position to form a conclusive view either way uh, on that particular argument, other than it is clear uh, that uh, DPP Drumgold's position was untenable. He could not continue in that role, and so the appropriate outcome. Uh, was uh, or has now occurred. Are you considering appointing an outside prosecutor to determine whether any of these breaches of ethics constitute criminal offences? Well, that's a, a matter that we will uh, take the appropriate time uh, to assess. This is months and months of work uh, by the Board of Inquiry. It deserves more than an instant knee-jerk reaction. It deserves serious consideration. That was the process that was underway uh, in the ACT. Uh, we've now responded with an interim response, but we reserve the right to say and do more in relation to that matter and indeed many others uh, in the coming weeks and months. And let's just be clear about this. Um, the most serious allegations against Mr Drumgold are that he misled the judge and the court and that he withheld important evidence from the defence. Had those breaches been known to the judge, would the trial have been abandoned? I'm just not in a position to be able to comment uh, on that, Sarah. That's, uh, that's really a, a speculative matter and uh, really beyond uh, my remit as, as Chief Minister. Let me that's ask you this. Have you, that, uh, have I'm you sure legal professionals would have a number of different views on. Let me ask you one more question. The, um, of course, this has been a, a, a very political matter from the get-go, but uh, Mr Drumgold asserted and then withdrew very serious allegations of political interference in this case, most notably against Linda Reynolds. Does she deserve an apology from the ACT government? Uh, well, I don't think it's uh, for the ACT government to issue apologies uh, to individuals. Uh, See, Mr Drumgold addressed those matters uh, during the inquiry. Uh, I said when I commissioned uh, this Board of Inquiry back in December last year that the whole issue was laced with politics. Uh, I think that remains the case. Uh, we need an objective and clear assessment uh, of the issues and, importantly, to focus uh, on systemic reforms that go forward. Uh, and, and as we stand that, at the moment... I think, yes. is what people would expect of politicians at this point. And just to, just to be absolutely clear at the end, at the moment, what happens next with Mr Drumgold, he will respond and you are considering whether or not his, his behaviour during the trial and the pre-trial constitutes a criminal offence. Is that right? Uh, that, is, that is correct. Uh, that process is ongoing. The main focus, though... Uh, what I believe should be the priority is the implementation uh, of the 10 sensible recommendations uh, contained uh, within the report, uh, particularly uh, as they relate uh, to the work uh, of police. And there are a number of matters that go directly to police processes, sensible recommendations that I'm sure the AFP uh, and their ACT contracted division, ACT policing, uh, will take seriously. Chief Minister, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you, Sarah.